finds Sandifer, who hits the jumper from the elbow. Fast forward now to the end of the first half. D'Lo Brewster there getting the steal. He'll go coast to coast and lay it in right at the buzzer. That gave them a 47 to 26 halftime lead, and it was all she wrote from there. After opening up the game on a 28 to 2 run, head coach Billy Wright and the Leathernecks would never look back in this one. They're able to win their home opener 95 to 48. Garrett Covington led the way with 15 points and six rebounds, while Dalen Ankrum tallied 13 points and eight boards. Staying inside Western Hall, WIU Volleyball looked to end their season on a high note against conference foe Nebraska Omaha this past Saturday. As always, the final home game of the season means it's senior day. Kaylee Simmons and Krishna Merriman begin or being honored before the game. The Leathernecks looking to end the home season in style. Very first play of the game. Shailen Greenhaw sends one over that, that grazes the net, but the service ace, ace works. Leathernecks strike first. Later in the set, Mackenzie Bouse would set up Shia Sanders for the kill. Leathernecks would take set number one. To the second set we go. Omaha gets off to a quick start. Here is a block there. Combined block by Chloe Doucette and Amanda Conlon. They took a quick 1-0 lead. The second point will go Omaha's way as well on the service ace. They would score the first five points of and then win set number two. Let's advance to the fourth set as Omaha has a 2-1 lead. Elise Brown sends one out of bounds. Attack error gives Western a 23-18 lead. Brown would try it again though and this time it gets blocked by Elisa Washington up front that made it 27-26. Set point four, the Leathernecks Shailen Greenhog gets the kill, getting it past Megan Roth. Leathernecks takes set four. And we will go to a fifth set. Omaha on the attack. That one was blocked in front by Riley Schumacher, keeping the Leathernecks hopes alive. But we go to match point for Omaha. Man Melanie Patino with the service error, and the Mavericks would take a thriller in Western Hall. The Leathernecks drop the season finale three sets to two. WIU ends the season four and 28 overall and one and 15 in conference. Coming up, the Macomb Lady Bombers basketball team opened their season against a tough Peoria Christian squad. We have all that action next. And the WIU men's basketball team opened up the home slate against Oak Hills Christian on Sunday. Stay tuned for full highlights right after this. Good morning and welcome back to Local Sports Focus. The Macomb High girls basketball team played host to Peoria Christian in the first round of the Macomb Invitational at Washington Street Gym. Let's head there right now. MHS looking to start off the Lady Bomber Classic with a win of their own against Peoria Christian at home. There's head coach Zach Keen getting his girls ready to go. Let's go to the first quarter. Nicole Lester on the break. She'll find Jordan Hare who lays it in for the Bombers. Macomb strikes first. Quick 2-0 lead there. And once again, the junior Hare working in the paint using that great post game to spin and get the basket. Bombers took a three-point lead. How about another for Hare? She attacks the basket and gets the shot to go through the contact. Now 11-8 in the first quarter. Then the Chargers start showing some life and the Bombers fall asleep on D. And Madison Fisher takes advantage hitting the three. Alex Neve would, would answer here, driving in the paint and giving the Bombers the score. Coach Keen on the prep on the pep talk in the first after the first quarter. Let's go to the second. Peoria Christian was up by three, and they'll do it once more after some great passing. They find Fisher again for a wide open shot. Nothing but net for the senior. 23-17 Chargers later in the quarter. Here's Nicole Lester getting past the double team for a sweet layup. That made it 25 to 21. Peoria Christian. And this time using the paint to score. Kishana Washington would find her own rebound right there and she lays it in on the second chance. Let's fast forward to the second half and Watson, well, she just picked up right where she left off, laying it in there from the baseline. MHS was down 10. Chargers kept adding on to that with this Brianna Holt triple from top of the key and it would be all Peoria Christian from there. Macomb High drops this one 54 to 39. The Lady Bombers take the court again tonight when they will play host to Pleasant Plains. And Bomber basketball will officially be in full swing when the boys tip things off next week in Jacksonville. As preseason preparations continue, the team spoke to us about their expectations of the season as well as what it will take for them to head back to the postseason.
Home High Boys basketball team, who points out the biggest difference from last year's Bombers that play in the regionals, which is experience. We had kind of a veteran group last year, some guys that had played a little bit of varsity the year before. This year, it's going to be brand new for a lot of these guys on the varsity level, and so trying to get them used to the speed of the game is probably going to be one of our biggest challenges here at the beginning of the season. That challenge will be greeted by Coach Anderson's players, who are confident that they'll be ready for the challenge at hand. I think last season, when we went to 3A and regionals, it kind of it was a wide uh, opened our eyes a little bit because that was our first time there. So I think this season is going to make us work a lot harder to prepare for that. We want a winning record. We want to win the conference. You know, we're going to do good in regionals, maybe win it, go to sectionals. In order to achieve that goal, Coach Anderson knows his bombers will have to commit to improving on defense. We spent probably three fourths of our practice time on the defensive end of the floor trying to develop those habits. You know, if you can't make jump shots, if one night you're not shooting the ball very well, you can always rely on your defense. So that's where we spend a lot of our time. And so if we can go to Jacksonville and play hard and play with those really good defensive habits, we'll compete with anybody there. He's a big guy on defense. He likes getting out there on defense. And I think uh, the players coming up to varsity really realize that, that defense is big for him. We had a decent summer, so the guys got their first taste of what it's going to be like playing on the varsity level. And so we're really excited, and I think that they'll be anticipating having success. And so I think a lot of our guys are really looking forward to it. They're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to the start of the season as well. The Crimson Classic begins next Monday in the Jacksonville Bowl. Stick around after the break. We head to Hanson Field as we take a look at the Leatherneck football team from Saturday. Plus, we hear from Coach Charlie Fisher on the mentality of his team. We have more local sports focus on the other side of the break. Local sports focus, the WIU football team played host to Northern Iowa in their final home game of the regular season. That's right, let's take you there now. It was senior day at Hanson Field. And how about senior Lance Lenore, the receiver, hyping the team up before the game. They look ready to go. And of course, Nathan Knuffman and family taking the senior stroll before kickoff. Let's go to the first quarter. Panthers are in the red zone. Eli Dunn finds Trevor Allen there to set up a first down and goal from the three. Just two plays later, Michael Malloy will run over a defender for the touchdown, two yard score for the junior back and the Panthers were on the board first. Next, UNI Drive. This is on third down in the preseason. All-America linebacker Brett Taylor. He doesn't miss this time. Chasing Dunn down for the sack. Panthers led 7-0 after a quarter of play. And how about we go to the second quarter here. Riggs Baxter, he leaps up and he deflects the pass. Incomplete. Nice play by Riggs Baxter. UNI kept the drive alive and Dunn found Cunningham who scores from nine yards out. 451 remaining in the second quarter but the ensuing PAT would be blocked. Nice way to break through. You and I would lead it 13 zip. The senior Knuffman would for WIU would connect on a 29 yard field goal, getting the Leathernecks on the board with 39 seconds to go. 13-3, UNI leads. Leathernecks stroll to the locker room, down 10 at half. So the second half right around the corner, Coach Fisher making some halftime adjustments there, but would it be enough? We go early to the second half, you and I on the move. There's a fade route to Darius Fountain. He's got it for the three yard touchdown. That made it 20 to three. You and I. Leathernecks were trying to counter. Here is the senior Joey Borsalino with a beautiful over the shoulder catch. Great concentration there. With 349 left to go in the third, McGuire finds a sliding Zeke Vashore in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Made it 20 to 9 after another blocked extra point. Watch out for Zeke LaShore later on in the game as well. Now, Western ball late in the third. Sean McGuire on the carry up the middle. He loses the ball. It was Carter Schultz who forced the fumble. You and I would take possession, but then they couldn't take advantage because here in the fourth, this is done firing into the end zone, and it's Eric Carrera with the interception. His first career pick, and what a time for it. Ensuing Leatherneck drive. McGuire is caught from behind by Ricky Neal. Another fumble recovered by the Panthers, Deshaun Dexter. He recovers it, still 20 to nine, you and I early on in the fourth. And now here is a controversial play. Trevor Allen with the ball. He catches it and loses the ball. He, he was ruled down after contact by review. Er, he was ruled down by contact after the review. He led, led to this, led to Michael Malloy running 
to the corner, looking for the pylon. Touchdown, UNI, six yard run, making it 27 9. UNI, 734 left. Leathernecks would need a score, and how about Lance Lenore? Breaking free, and he is wide open for another touchdown. Western was trailing 27 16 at this point with 608 left after that quick score that they desperately needed. You and I will recover the onside kick. It led to this, a 21-yard field goal by Sam Drysdale. Panthers were ahead with two touchdowns with 158 to go. Here's Sean McGuire here, keeping the play alive, directing traffic, firing into the corner, and it's LaShore again for the touchdown. Leathernecks are still in at this point, 30-23, to you and I. Last chance for Western here. A good onside kick gets the nice bounce, but you and I would fall on it, and they seal the deal and win the game. Leathernecks drop their last home game of the season to Northern Iowa, 30-23, Saturday afternoon at Hanson Field. Western's own Sean McGuire put up 237 yards with three touchdowns and went 25-42 of 42 on the day. Brett Taylor earned 18 tackles as well. Everybody in the program, from the players to the coaches, know what's at stake. That's right. It is a do-or-die scenario for the Leathernecks in Carbondale on Saturday. Mentality that, like, you're not going to be denied and you go relax and play championship football. Every play is, is, is uh, you know, it's playoff football. Everything's on the line, every snap. So you gotta be prepared, you gotta be focused, you gotta be relaxed, you gotta go get the job done. The Fighting Leathernecks head to Carbondale this weekend to take on the Salukis, who have a record of three and seven. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Coming up after the break, I'll sit down with a state title coach who's one of the best at Illinois and brought home a championship this weekend. You have two minutes to grab a cup of coffee and join us back here for more Local Sports Focus. Well, welcome back. One of McComb's very own has made conference honors many times in his career. But this past week, he made national headlines for his play on the football field. McComb native Brett Taylor was honored with a national mention for defensive player of the week, Taylor graduated from Macomb High in 2013. That's right, Taylor was named preseason All-American and is the current Division I national leader in solo tackles. He set a career high with 15 solo tackles and 18 total stops against UNI. Now, here on Local Sports Focus, we want to inform you, our viewers, about the sporting events going on at Macomb High and Western Illinois University. And we will end our show with a look ahead at next week's sports for the area. Our first schedule we are going to start with the Lady Bomber Classic Basketball Tournament held at Washington Street Gym. The Lady Bombers play today at 8 p.m. against Pleasant Plains. Then they're off until Friday when they play Havana at 8 p.m. The Bombers finish up on Saturday with two games. First one's at 11 a.m. and then ending the tournament at 8 p.m. The Macomb High boys basketball team is also in a tournament this upcoming week in Jacksonville. They'll start off against the hometown team at 7.30 p.m. on Monday. Bombers are back in action on Wednesday against Pleasant Plains. That'll be at 5 p.m. After Thanksgiving, the team will start again on Friday evening at 5 p.m. against Dunlap High School, and the Classic will wrap up on Saturday. And McComb has two games at 10.30 against Chatham Glenwood. Shout out to Danny Fry. And later that evening at 5 p.m. against Morton. Western Illinois University starts out their week schedule today with men's and women's basketball games today. Women's tips off in less than two hours at SEMO. Then tonight the men's team will play SEMO, but at Western Hall. Game time is set for 7 p.m. You can catch that on ESPN3. And on Saturday, Fighting Leatherneck football will finish their regular season at 2 p.m. against the Salukis in Carbondale. Later that afternoon, the women's team is back in action against Northern Illinois inside Western Hall. And finally, the men's basketball team will take on Crown College next Wednesday at Western Hall. Tip-off is at 2 p.m. Thanks for joining us today for Local Sports Focus. We will be off next Wednesday because of Thanksgiving break, but we'll be back the Wednesday after that. That's right. And for more sports coverage, join us for Live at 4 on Thursday. For Jason Chauvin, I'm Redrick Terry. And for all of us at the Local Sports Focus, have a great morning.